This is not just your ordinary choir when you come in and sing maybe on Sunday in, in church. This is a brotherhood really. And that's, that's really what, what draws people here. The Ukrainian Bandurist Chorus passes on a culture through its music. The group has a 100-year history, and at times, performing has come with a great cost. Governments were very frequently scared of the Bandura and the Bandura players, because they were the oral history of the nation and of the culture. They were able to continue talking about historical events that maybe the authorities didn't want people to know about. And it's maybe easier to burn a book. It's pretty difficult to bury a song or bury an instrument. The music dates back centuries, with traveling performers sharing stories through songs. After World War I, the Ukrainian government organized a professional chorus, which is the foundation of this group. But then the 1930s came, and Stalinist purges, uh, persecutions, imprisonments, uh, jailings, executions, and uh, members of our group, conductors, band, bandura players, uh, singers, they were imprisoned, sent to Siberia, or executed. Surviving members performed in World War II displaced persons camps before emigrating with other Ukrainians in mass to the United States. Many members settled in Detroit, Michigan, and revived the chorus, which continues today, with new players and singers from across the U.S. and Canada. Andre Birko is a third-generation member. It was kind of in my blood to begin with. My grandfather was actually a Bandura player in Zhytomyr, Ukraine, Ukraine which is uh, it's a city a couple hours from Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, and he was a Bandura player back home. And he met up with the Banduras Chorus in the displaced person camps in Germany. So that's where he joined. Then uh, my family, that was on my mom's side, they came over to the United States in the late 40s. And actually my dad, in order to uh, hook my mom, learned to play bass bandura and join the choir. Birko says the bandura is tough to play and members of his group have to rigorously practice outside of their regular work, as these are unpaid positions. He describes the instrument as a cross between a lute and a zither. So it's a, a lowercase b that has strings on it. It has a neck like a guitar, with, and then it's got a huge belly that sticks out over here. And unlike a guitar where you press on the frets to make your different notes, the bandura is in some ways simpler because it's got one string per note. You know, you play individual strings to hit individual notes, but that also makes it harder because it's got 60 strings or however many is on here. On a recent Saturday afternoon in Parma, members of the chorus gathered for a weekend rehearsal. Many members flew or drove to Ohio for the occasion. There are various ages from we have uh, someone that's 14 that just started with us. And we have gentlemen that are in their mid-70s. But they all work hard. And we create, you know, wonderful experience. Not just music, but more importantly, maybe experiences for us and also for the audience. So they can maybe better uh, get a better sense of the history of Ukraine. That's part of our mission. Uh, we, are, we do act as ambassadors and in a difficult time for Ukraine who is at war and it's being occupied by Russian forces, we can show another side of Ukraine and kind of be, uh, uh, have some kind of musical diplomacy in some ways. About a dozen members live in Northeast Ohio, including Nazar Kalavashko. Whenever a person leaves their home country, they, they leave a bit of, a, uh, of their heart behind. And in addition to family and friends that I left behind, I also uh, left the culture and the music that I, that I love so, so much. So when I came here, obviously, I was seeking to re rejoin with the culture and with the music. The group travels around the world to perform and has done so for decades, playing everywhere from Severance Hall in Cleveland to the Sydney Opera House in Australia. Recognize that building? That's the uh, Notre Dame Cathedral. It is a source of pride for Volodymyr Mirha, 
who moved to the U.S. with his parents at age two. You're sharing something, to, something that is enticing to the people you're sharing it with. And it just makes the world a little bit more, no, I'd say a lot more interesting. The chorus also fosters education of the instrument in order to keep the traditions alive. There are music, Bandura music schools, uh, private teachers throughout the country and through, through Canada. That's like the white Birko people. is one of those Bandura teachers, passing along the skills and the stories. I have to give back this, this opportunity for, for the ones, you know, the ones up and coming. Right now the choir is celebrating our 100 year anniversary and who knows whether we'll still be around in North America 100 years from now, but if we're not, it's not gonna be my fault. And, and I just, I want this, this group to continue, and if it's to continue, there are people that gotta do the work.